The OnePlus Nord 2 has now officially launched, and as far as the entire OnePlus lineup goes, this might be one to pay attention to. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. If you've seen this standard OnePlus 9 and the original OnePlus Nord, then imagine these two devices fused, and we'd have to say the result is the Nord 2. As someone who was a fan of the 9 series design and the Nord series colours, we think this is a big bonus. While I won't outright say that the OnePlus Nord 2 feels particularly premium or expensive in the hand, there's definitely a heft or a weight that assures you that this isn't a bargain bucket device. Not that I expected it to be particularly cheap, given the original Nord was also so well crafted. There's more glass this time around at the rear, and for whatever reason, that is a nice touch. Let's talk internals though, as there are some important and very notable changes on the Nord 2 here. First, the OnePlus has decided to use a MediaTek processor for the very first time, specifically a custom Dimensity 1200 AI chip. When OnePlus ditched the 800 series Qualcomm chips on the 2020 Nord, it seemed to work out just fine, given that the Dimensity 1200 AI benchmarks way above that of the Snapdragon 765G, we should see quite the leap in performance without any sort of sacrifice. The rest of the hardware package has that tried and tested OnePlus hardware flavour, including the fantastic alert slider and those nice little touches around the well-crafted chassis. The 6.43 inch Full HD Plus display is clocked at 90 Hz and despite a minor decrease in the upper left punch hole, is practically the same display as used on the 2020 model. It's bright, vibrant and the high refresh rate AMOLED is as good as it gets on an affordable Android phone here in 2021. For biometric security, the in-display optical fingerprint scanner has also returned here too. I found it pretty fast and accurate and the upgraded haptics really help sell any and all interactions with the Nord 2 including that fingerprint scanner. OnePlus also touts some neat upscaling tech for the colours and video resolution here, which can make certain content look a little weird, but in more of an interesting sense, although you can disable this in the software settings. It is hard to deny the display is one of the strongest portions of the entire OnePlus Nord 2 package, as this is a very good AMOLED panel. So far, if you were worried about the MediaTek processor, I have to say I cannot really fault the performance levels of the OnePlus Nord 2, and while I'm not a huge gamer, I can play Call of Duty Mobile without the device even breaking a sweat at the highest graphical fidelity settings and at 60 FPS almost constantly. Everything is smooth and consistent, even with the supposed inferior graphical performance when compared to Qualcomm series chipsets. The biggest jump is undoubtedly in the usage of UFS 3.1 storage, and it struck me right away this time around. Much like the flagship tier OnePlus 9 series, Everything on the OnePlus Nord 2 seems to load almost instantly, and the 90Hz refresh rate ensures that animations are slick and smooth here too. Even if the chipset isn't quite as capable, loading and UI smoothness are 100% not an issue. Oxygen OS 11.3 is pre-installed and runs without a hitch, and while there is a definite hint of Oppo's Color OS for the first time, none of this affects the experience in any sort of detrimental way thus far. The added customization options might actually be a big plus point for longtime fans of this third party Android skin. Almost all of the tweaks and tricks that have been in Oxygen OS for such a long time, and you can remember, are present and correct. If we do see wholesale integration with Color OS, it's not immediately obvious, at least at this stage, with Oxygen OS 11.3 and on the Nord 2. Despite a similar setup to that of the OnePlus 9, the Nord 2 does not actually include any of the Hasselblad tweaks seen on the flagship tier but the upgrade of the original Nord is immediately obvious. While I have only had a few days to ex fully explore the OnePlus Nord 2, I'm actually confident that the larger Sony IMX766 sensor, which is found in the OnePlus 9 series, will provide some substantial boosts in overall image and video quality. Removing some lenses to make way for this flagship tier main sensor was also a really sensible decision in my opinion, especially because the result is the removal of some of the gimmicky additions like that of a macro camera sensor. Also, jumping up to a 4,500mAh battery is yet another one of those sensible decisions that OnePlus has taken with the Nord 2. That's almost a 20% increase over last year, and the result is a vastly extended lifespan, or at least it seems at this early stage. During my brief period with the Nord 2, at no point have I felt battery anxiety start to creep in. By upping the charge speeds available to 65 watts too, being able to go from not to 100% in just 40 minutes is something I think that buyers will immediately love, and thus far, the battery seems to be pretty good for the most part.
So it's easy to see that OnePlus has just decided that with the Nord 2, there is absolutely no point waiting for another brand to undercut their OnePlus 9 series devices. So they've gone and done it themselves. It's an interesting strategy that might actually pay off as so far the OnePlus Nord 2 looks like it provides much of what the standard OnePlus 9 touts, but at a lower than two thirds of the asking price. Well, I have to admit that I haven't really thoroughly put the OnePlus Nord 2 through its paces by making incremental upgrades in almost every single area. This looks like one of the standouts in the OnePlus lineup. Of course, we'll tackle that properly over the coming days ahead of our full review, but until then, things are looking very promising. Be sure to check out our comparison of the original Nord and Nord 2 if you want to see more coverage just like this. And if you have any questions about this device, then let us know down in the comment sections below. But until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later.